this is Matt from drawingtutorialsonline.com, lesson number three. All right, well, in lesson two, we blocked in some of the shapes, the eye socket, the nose, the lips. Then once you block in these shapes, the next step is to put little shapes within the bigger shapes. In this particular uh, lesson number three, it's gonna be some of the details of the eye, uh, shapes within shapes. Some of the detail of the nose, shapes within shapes. And then we're gonna dance on down and start to draw some shapes on the neck because you do not wanna work in the vacuum. You don't wanna work on the head for a long period of time and then do the neck only to realize that that face is out of proportion. Working on getting some of the shapes in the neck is gonna be very beneficial because you can use these shapes to compare to the shapes of the face for proportions. All right, let's get started. Okay, here we go. This video is sped up by roughly 40%. It, this was a little bit of a longer video. It was about 27 minutes, and I had made the promise uh, to try to keep these to roughly 20 minutes so you can get through them a little bit more quickly. And yeah, so I, as you can see, I have a really sharp pencil. This is just all about drawing shapes. Another thing that I mention in the critique gallery when I critique a lot of people's images I always give that exercise and I'll, I'll put it in the PDF uh, the exercise of just drawing these shapes you don't want to look at that shape of the uh, shadow shape on the forehead as a shadow shape on the forehead you just want to look at it as an abstract triangle I'm just looking at the edges of these and I'm shading solid. So not a lot of uh, rocket science on my part going on here. A lot of the rocket science is in your eye-hand coordination. But just being aware of this stuff is vastly going to improve the way that you draw. Again, it's drawing the edge of the shapes. Then it's shading the shapes in a solid way. And then it's going on in and drawing shapes within shapes. And that's what we're going to do next here. I'm going to come on into the shape of the eye socket. And now I'm going to draw the eyelash within that shape. Look more at the reference than you look at your drawing. Let's look at where that eyelash is. Yeah, you see I'm getting up a little closer. <laughs> I, sometimes I just have to look a little bit deeper. I'm, I'm pretty far away from the drawing. After a while, what I did was I actually put the drawing on my monitor too. So I had my reference in front of me and then I, I pulled it up on my monitor. So what is the angle of that iris? We're looking at shapes within shapes. You don't want to be a bull in a china shop at this stage. You want to be very subtle. Get the angle of the bottom of the eye lid. A little bit darker over there. Let's go darker with the entire shape. Get that lash. Always extend the lashes past the eye. Let's see if we can't get the angle of that lower lid. Again, if you're having too much trouble seeing that piece of reference, you can definitely download the, uh, the bigger version of it. Get that lower lash. This is fairly small but doable. You, just, you, you don't want to overdo some of the details because we're not dealing with a big 5 inch by 5 inch portrait. Uh, we're dealing with a smaller portrait but it's doable, but you have to keep in mind you're not going to get on, on into that eye and do all of these volume lines. You can see that that eye is uh, smaller than my thumbnail. So don't get caught up in one section for too long. Move on. So Now you can see I, I'm going to leave that eye and I'm going to live with it for a little while to see if I like it. I want to refine the edges of the lips and the nose. Now let's draw shapes within shapes. Let's get the nostril in, or at least the beginnings of that nostril shape. Sharpen that pencil. That cast shadow that the nose is casting on the top of the mouth area, it's an it's a important shape. That needs to be nice and clean and sharp. 
get the angle of that lip. The darkest part is where the two lips touch. That's the accent in the model in factors. A little bit of a thicker upper lip. Now lean back and look from far away. Are the is the line for the lips coming into the face too much? Is that line angled in the right way? How about that lower lip? How's that looking? That shadow shape needs to be a little bit thicker. Okay, I'm thinking about the form. Is the chin a little bit lower than that upper lip? Yes, it is. And hopefully I lower it a little bit more than what you see there. See, I'm holding my pencil normally. Everybody holds their pencil different. And you're going to hold your pencil different at different stages of the portrait drawing. Any teacher says that uh, you have to hold your pencil this way. I would run from that teacher as quickly as I possibly could. There is no one right way for every artist to hold their pencil. It really is what works best for you. And like I said, at different stages of the drawing, I hold my pencil in different ways. Wrap that shadow around in a circular fashion around the cheekbone. Don't press down too hard over there. Look at the white of the eye as an abstract shape. I'm looking at that zygomatic arch, that cheekbone. This is where an understanding of the skull is going to be beneficial. A little bit more pressure with the eyelid and the eyelash. And let's make that whole shape a little bit darker. Good. So a gradual buildup. See what I did? I, I, I moved away from the eye and then I came back to it. Let's get that little underplane shadow shape. Good. And now we're getting the underplane of that cheekbone and different variations in tone of the jawbone. So you just want to squint at that head. And just by doing these subtle tones on the face, you're going to start to show the surface planes within that face shape. Good. Same thing now. When you look at the face, you have to ask yourself the question, well, where's the whitest white? Where's the lightest light? The lightest light is right underneath the sideburn area. It's the zygomatic arch. It's a bone. That's why it's catching a lot of highlight. And now the chin is not nearly as light as that bone because it's further away from the light. It's turning away from the light. So you don't want to have all of the face equally the same light. Now this shadow shape, you got to measure it in relationship to other parts of the portrait. Look at it in terms of, is it a square shape? Is it a triangular shape? There's lots of triangles on his neck. Lean back, look at it from far away, take a measurement line, don't work in a vacuum. So you can see I'm using a lot of the same language here because like I said, this is not that complicated when you really analyze what I'm talking about. The complication comes in in getting your hand to do what your eyes see. And that's more eye-hand coordination than knowledge. I've been doing a lot of drawing as of late, so this portrait came a little bit easier to me. Uh, then in the past, when I haven't been drawing that much, I'd just be struggling uh, with the eye-hand coordination, even though I knew what to do. Let's get that sternomastoid coming from the back of the ear. That's a muscle that you really want to become familiar with if you're into drawing portraits. Just a little bit of a crisper shadow shape now. So you see what happens when we, we, we gradually push the values down. Pushing the values down means pushing the values down to a darker value on the value scale. Pushing them up means making them go lighter. So as we push down the values in the shadow side of all of these shadow shapes, things start to look much more solid, much more structured, much more three-dimensional. Now, let's even go darker with this part of the neck into the trapezius sternomastoid, right into the trapezius. Just deal with this as one big shape right now. Don't get too crazy with trying to render everything out in terms of volume lines. Let's go back, see if we can't utilize the ear now. Now, usually in uh, my classroom, 
when I teach portraits, yes, I teach the same thing. I do start with the two ovals, uh, which I'll have a whole separate portrait on the two ovals, uh, 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 not a separate portrait, a separate course. But the ear is the most important thing with the two ovals. The ear is something that uh, when you use the ear as a measuring tool, it, the, the head just becomes so much more structured and the likeness uh, gets a whole lot more likable. I'm just looking at the ear right now as abstract shadow shapes that are wrapping around all of the cylindrical shapes within the ear. Now again, don't press down too hard with the ear. Keep it fairly light right now in case you make a mistake. There's a lot of little shapes in there. You could have a hard edge on the area that I'm working on now that will allow the ear to come above the jaw. So sharp edges make elements come forward and soft ed edges make elements go back. So the edge of the ear could be a hard edge. Let's knock down some more of this value and get rid of some of the white paper. Right now I'm just doing a scribbling pencil stroke. Just looking. Sometimes uh, as I'm drawing this, I forgot what I was listening to when I was doing this portrait. Uh, I was either listening to an audiobook or I was listening to and watching simultaneously uh, an Interpol concert. It's my favorite band. It's a band called Interpol. Uh, they were uh, at a concert 2014 Glastonbury and uh, it was pretty cool. The sun was setting. They just sounded so good and uh, I was watching that, had my headphones on. But I was also at some point in this portrait process listening to a really good audiobook. The title of the audiobook was Living with a Seal. It's a pretty crazy book. Little bit of that collarbone. Let's get this collarbone in in relationship to the other one. I'm just drawing these shapes. They are wrapping around the form. Don't press down hard because you don't want to end the drawing abruptly. We're drawing part now of that sternum. That's a striation in the pectoralis muscle that's going all the way to the humerus. The knowledge of anatomy of the neck and the collarbones. If you had to learn one bone, I'd say learn the collarbones because they are important in a figure drawing, but they're even more important in a portrait because you usually see them in every portrait. Uh, that's a big one for portraits and figures, and it's easy to learn. Just knocking down the values, trying to shade in more of a solid way. Now, okay, uh, just a side note here. When you shade these shapes this way and you leave it this way, it looks flat. It looks more like a graphic design, but this is part of the process where you first you build up these shapes and then you add modeling lines to them. In essence, you can add the modeling factors, pencil stroke direction, these modeling lines, will help to turn these shadow shapes. Right now, all of those shadow shapes that I drew on the neck are flat. And as we progress, we'll start to turn them. So let's turn this little vein on his neck. There's a couple little lines. There's folds of skin because he's extremely looking up and bending his head backwards. So whenever you're gonna have a bend in the body, in this case, the neck, the part, the right side of the drawing, the neck is stretched. The left side of, of the drawing, the, uh, the neck right there is crunching. So you wanna draw those crunching lines, but you have to be careful because you have to choose 
a pose that doesn't have too many of those crunching lines on the neck, especially on a female, they do not look flattering. Uh, even on a male, they don't look flattering. If, if you overdo the uh, contrast on those crunch lines, some people would call them folding lines. It's where the skin folds over on itself. They're not obvious at all on this one, but they are important. Okay, I zoomed out just a little bit because I want to just get a little bit more of the shoulders because I think I'm in a good place now with the neck and the face. I just want to see where I'm going to kind of end this drawing towards the bottom. A couple of form lines. There's some convex lines happening at the deltoid. couple form lines on the pectoralis. A little bit more solid now. That's a major landmark, that side plane of the collarbone. Be very, see, now I, I've switched my game around a little bit down towards the bottom. I went from drawing the angles on the face to more of a continuous, loose, flowing line. That's because when I draw the figure, I like to use continuous line. I like to use more gesture. When I draw the portrait, I like to use more angles. Every artist is different, but that's what I've kind of developed into my uh, process, and it works for me. Curve some of those lines around. I'm being much more gestural now with a muscles there on the uh, shoulder. Different pencil strokes for the hair when we get to the texture of the hair, but you can still keep the, that in mind at this very early stage. Let's make sure we have these widths of the neck. Let's refine the edge, make it a little bit more complicated. That's another little trick. The more complicated you can make the edge, the more realistic your portrait is going to look. Complicated edges, uh, not too many teachers talk about this, but making your edge as complicated as possible in some areas will help your drawings look more realistic. The simpler the edge, the more primitive. So at first we work with a primitive edge and then we progressively get more complicated. Be loose and gestural. This is a little nitpicky right now. I'm just separating the sternomastoid from um, the Adam's apple area. Just trying to put down some more value. I'm knocking down the Adam's apple area. I don't want that as light as the cheekbone. Let's just put in and block in a big front plane shadow for the deltoid and a little bit of tone near the sternum. Let's put in a little bit of background tone in that negative space because we want to blend the head into something. We don't want to have the head just be against white paper. That is a recipe for a flat drawing. You always want to have one area of the drawing where you lose an edge and I'm going to lose an edge uh, maybe there, I haven't decided yet. Just blocking in some tone. I feel a little bit more confident at this stage, so I'm going to press down a little bit harder. Some detail line. All right, we're just about done with uh, lesson number three. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching lesson number three. I hope that it gave you some important information to help you with your portraits. If you want to take it a step further and learn more from me, definitely check out some of the links in the description below. I've been teaching at the School of Visual Arts for 20 plus years. I've been an artist uh, in some form or another my whole entire life. 
um, from an 18 year illustration career to run in drawing tutorials online.com for about 10 years. We've, t we've helped thousands of people who have visited and joined the website by our member critiques, our member podcasts, all of the downloadable photo reference that we have to offer along with the dozens upon dozens of uh, courses as well. So thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting more and more of these uh, portrait uh, drawing lessons for you. So thanks again and I'll talk to you soon. Be good.